One thing I love and hate about each iconic custom zombies map. This list is a blend of personal preference and most popular and will be excluding any close resembling remasters of Treyarch Zombies maps. What I love about Leviathan is that there is just so much to do. In terms of content and tasks for Easter egg lovers, this is basically the custom zombies equivalent of Origins. There are tons of side quests, tons of hidden secrets to unlock little extras. There's the time trial systems, the challenges, the mask systems that we saw in the later maps of Black Ops 3, as well as two incredible main boss fights as well and they are so fun to play by the way these boss fights are genuinely amazing all found within a super thick main easter egg quest with a ton of steps dope special weapons and a hell of a lot more if you actually take the time to learn this map properly you are truly rewarded for that knowledge there's a ton of things that you can use to your disposal that gain a very enjoyable advantage to the gameplay experience all you need to do is learn the map and learn it well but what i hate about leviathan is that it does not cater to the casual player at all this map is so huge in scale that if you don't religiously play it you're gonna find yourself getting lost so frequently especially if you are attempting something like an easter egg run most of the areas in this map are consistent with the theme and so it's very easy to just not really understand or have a real bearing on where you actually are this also affects general gameplay mechanics like how there's an excavator that can breach certain areas and honestly as a casual player finding the hacker device and navigating your way back to spawn to prevent it from happening is way too stressful basically what i'm saying is be prepared to be frustrated doing the most simple things in this map one thing that i love love about Wanted is the consistent Western theme. The theme of this map echoes through the entire roster of weapons that you find, which have some really dope variants too, right down to things like the mystery box, even having dynamite as frag grenades, the round change music, the HUD, the character clothing, the death machine, the traps. I mean, literally the entire thing is so on point with the theme. And I feel like that really elevates the experience to a new level. But one thing that I hate about wanted i mean there's not really much to hate with this map to be honest but i will say the specialist weapon in this map the ancient bow is just weird first off the recharge seems to be broken somehow it seems to recharge really quickly i don't know if that's intentional to counteract what my main point is and that is that the bow is really weak in the later rounds in my opinion a specialist weapon should be able to carry you forward and save your ass especially if you're in a corner and the bow acts really well up until you know the round 20 mark where it starts to dip and then by the later rounds like like the, into the 40s for example it is absolute trash like it is so bad i mean it reminds me of the same kind of disappointment you get from using the Annihilator in the standard Black Ops 3 maps. But to me, it just means that the Primal Bow in Wanted contradicts the very essence of what I believe a specialist weapon should actually do. One thing that I love about Kowloon is the setting. It does a really good job of blending new and nostalgic together in a place that's just gorgeous. Of course, you're hit with nostalgia in certain areas that are mapped after Die Rise. And also for those who played the Black Ops 1 campaign, where there's a mission that's actually set in Kowloon, which is obviously what the map is based on. Fusing this stuff together in a Black Ops 3 package with awesome lighting, as well as new areas and an all original layout, Kowloon has absolutely nailed the setting in a beautiful way. One thing that I hate about Kowloon is why are there six power switches, dude? Like, I get you might want to have something a little bit different. You know, Shangri-La had two power switches. Why not make six? But I mean, these power switches are spread across the map in different places. And whilst, yes, you only need to flip each switch once, it does kind of beg the question of why. I mean, I could understand if it followed in the same footsteps as Origins, you know, wherein enabling one of the six power generators in that map would bring power to the perk machines and things in that section. But in the case of Kowloon, the power switches don't do anything until you flip the very last one. And so for me, I just can't really wrap my head around it. But I will say this is a very small thing to nitpick. Overall, this map is brilliant. One thing that I love about Nightmare is the environment art. Oh my goodness, I have never seen a map look this good in Black Ops 3. The environment art across the board for this map is 10 10 and you can't tell me otherwise i love how the different floors in this map all have their own kind of tone and atmosphere as well you're not just hit with one consistent vibe for the entire thing i mean the whole thing is eerie but each area is distinct and unique but all of it and i mean all of it just insanely detailed i love the style that this map takes i love the theme and i love the design in general and it has to be praised but one thing that i hate 
about Nightmare, and it's really the only thing I can say about it is that there was never a round-based version that ever released. I mean, to my knowledge, there was never one planned anyway. This is a story-driven map, but I don't know. To me, with the different vibes on different floors and the use of an elevator in this map, we could have had a dope, 5-esque round-based zombies experience with Nightmare. And I know it would have taken a lot of effort to make, but I think the real reason I would love something like that is because A, there's not enough maps like 5. B, I feel like the canvas that Nightmare has already got is a brilliant foundation for something like this. But C, and honestly, the biggest reason why I wish there was a round-based version of Nightmare is because having Nightmare as a solely story-based experience meant players got a awesome time playing it the first couple times and speedrunners must have had a blast too but ultimately people don't really play this map anymore because it's just not that replayable to experience something so linear to be honest i wouldn't change nightmare at all but a separate round based version would have went so far man i just wish i just wish one thing that i love about atonement which is of course the iconic remake of fabric durant Toten, is the panzer hound this thing is terrifying and adds such a cool layer onto what is an incredible map effectively mid round this wolfenstein beast is going to be airdropped in from a plane and until you get your hands on the upgraded wonder weapon the only real way to tackle it is to run frantically around the map to find a bazooka twice to shoot it down. The fear that this injects into the general gameplay loop is priceless. Now, some might say it's too stressful, but for me, it just adds a gorgeous level of spice to this map. Also, I can't go past this map without mentioning the Conjurer Battle Mace, which is a weapon that Madgaz named after me and put in Atonement, which I love. But one thing that I do hate about Atonement, honestly, is the World War II weapon ports. I only say that because the Pack-a-Punch variants of these ports are really predictable. Most of them do the exact same thing. You'll get a clip upgrade and you'll get a red dot sight. Now, the red dot sights, they just make my eye twitch. The only reason why is because, well, A, they're World War II weapons. B, pretty much every automatic weapon gets the same attachments and it does kind of drive me insane i mean the weapon ports themselves are actually great but the lack of variation sucks away the intrigue from packer punching and of course atonement is far from the only map to feature these ports with this problem but as there's really little to not like about this map this is the thing I'm going with. One thing that I love about Return to Dust Heron House is that it captures the essence of World at War. There are very few maps that can do this without actually being a World at War remaster, but Return to Dust Heron House, it just perfectly encapsulates the tone. The weapons are from COD World War II, but the ports are actually unique seemingly for this map, and they do fit the tone very well. Of course, the original version of this map was actually a custom map for World at War, so that might have something to do with it. But even still, this Black Ops 3 rendition feels like a beautiful update, but without compromising on tone and atmosphere. And that goes a long way for me personally, because I absolutely love the vibe of World at War maps, as you guys know. And Return to Dust Heron House is a beautiful example of of an all new fresh experience that retains the very essence of what made zombies so good in the first place. But one thing that I hate about Return to Dust Heron House is that one of the most simple things like the Pack-a-Punch, for example, you're actually gonna need a guide just to understand how to do it. Me personally, with the simple things, the gameplay elements of zombies like perks, Pack-a-Punch, turning on the power, stuff like that. If I'm having to use a guide for any of those things, it's an instant turn off and enough for me to not really wanna come back to it. Of course, I know there are some people out there who really enjoy having a quest to do every little thing. But for me, as someone that just likes to hop in and play, it just really does feel like a nuisance. I mean, having us jump around the place, building stuff, finding parts, teleporting here and there is all well and good if it was obvious what you're actually doing. But if you need to use a guide, there's a problem. I mean, it's a very cool quest and a very cool area where Pack-a-Punch is found, but I personally would have liked something more simple. One thing that I love about Rainy Death is unquestionably the weapons found within it. I mean, we're talking about weapons from Destiny, Battlefield 4, Killing Floor 2, Payday 2, Apex Legends. I mean, come on, like this is so cool to see. In fact, I'm pretty sure that not one weapon found in this map is just native to Call of Duty. I think every single one is from a completely different game that has been reanimated from scratch. I mean, that alone is crazy impressive. They have some awesome Pack-a-Punch variants as well. So if you're someone that likes the mystery of upgrading a weapon to find out what it actually does, you will be blessed with some unique features in this one. And also the Wonder Weapons, without doubt the 
best roster of wonder weapons in custom zombies and perhaps zombies in general like it is that good from the shadow scythe the murder vault the tractor cannon the rat king like you are completely covered here the weapons of rainy death easily make it one of the most replayable maps i've ever touched but one thing that i hate about rainy death it's not even really a hate thing i i really can't hate on this map at all but i will say some of the quests to get some of these weapons are just a little too tedious now of course this is balanced by having some wonder weapons like the murder vault for example be actually very simple to get but in the case of some other weapons you know for example the rat king the tractor cannon especially there's some real tedious steps involved that kind of make you not really want to bother to actually get these weapons at all but maybe that's just me i know there's a lot of people that really enjoy a complex quest or something that just involves doing a little bit extra to get the things that you want and to feel rewarded for doing it but me personally i just think some of these quests are just a little a bit too tedious for me to bother. One thing that I love about Daybreak is the skybox change. I love a map with a skybox change. Effectively, what that is is when you can actually play the map in day or in nighttime. Honestly, this map is absolutely gorgeous in either format, but just knowing that you can, if you want to, hop into the night version of the map, I do absolutely love that. And it's cool that it's actually a reward that you get for finishing the easter egg it just adds an extra layer to doing the easter egg and in my opinion actually makes the easter egg kind of worth doing it's always nice to have a permanent reminder of what you've accomplished whilst you play for the rest of your game it reminds me a lot of moon when you've actually blown up the earth and you can kind of just see it in the distance it's it's a nice reminder of what you've managed to pull off but one thing that i hate about daybreak are the jumping jacks the jumping jacks should stay in die rise Please don't bring them out here. Don't bring them to any other map. Don't bring them to custom zombies. We're, we're done, okay? We're done with the jumping jacks. I mean, these are actually jolting jacks. These are the things that were from Alpha Omega. It's still the same thing. Let's be real. Now, I'd say the spawn rate is a little too high, but it's not unbearable. But the thing that does make these things unbearable are certain Easter egg steps in which you need to defend yourself in a tight enclosed area. I'm looking at the diner step right now because my goodness, the jolting jacks will absolutely fuck your shit up if you do not prioritize them in this step. And even when you do prioritize them, it's very easy to have them get lost in the crowd and it could just be the end of your run. Now, I like difficulty. These things, they just get on my nerves. One thing that I love about Mori Rebirth are the visuals. I mean, we can't we can't go with this map without talking about those visuals. They are gorgeous. The design, the lighting, the theme, the foliage, the detail, it is just absolutely mesmerizing. And clearly a lot of effort was put into it and it deserves that recognition. But one thing that I hate about Mori Rebirth, and it's definitely enough for me to never do the Easter egg again, is there's one step where you need to stand on the stones, kind of like Shangri-La, except a million times more tedious. You got to figure out the pattern. You got to try and step on the stone without stepping on any others, but you kind of have to do it multiple times. And the stones are placed everywhere in this map. I mean, there are so many of them and it's so easy to accidentally step on one, which ruins the entire thing. And then there's waiting and then there's running. It's just honestly, like I can't express here in this video how annoying this step is but to me it honestly just completely kills off any desire to do this easter egg which is a shame because the boss fight and the other steps are actually pretty fun now one thing that i love about shoot house are those upgraded weapon variants i have never seen a custom map that has such unique variants when you upgrade weapons. Pretty much every single weapon in this map has some kind of feature, some kind of ability, some kind of completely game-changing alteration that makes trying every single weapon in that machine so worth your time. I mean, there are weapons that convert into like Doom style weapons. You got different attachments, grenade launchers, shotguns, different firing modes, hidden Easter egg abilities with custom animations. There's so many things, so many weird kind of extra abilities, like for example, an SMG that when you reload it generates a random clip size a sniper rifle that shoots mines that detonate after a few seconds like there's so many cool little things but some of them are just so unique like they're so completely out of the box and how they're thought up that you can't help but just admire it like this map has the coolest upgrade variants ever seen in zombies but one thing that i hate about shoot house are that the perk spawns can be pretty damn savage i can't lie you can find yourself waiting a healthy amount of time before you get your hands on jug or double tap and so often you're trying to find yourself defending perk stations and steps for the easter eggs with really not much to help you and so that makes rounds like you know from 10 to around the 15 16 mark actually a lot more challenging than you'd expect from other maps but to be honest that's not really necessarily a bad thing it kind of gives you nuketown vibes so in fact let me just tell you the real thing the real thing that i truly hate about shoe house because what is that 
What is that? That space, I'm not going to lie, it's unforgivable. It's straight up unforgivable. I go to sleep still traumatized by the placement of that space. And I, I just, chicken hat man, if you read this, if you see this, if you hear this, please just fix it. Just please. But that, lads, ladies and gentlemen, concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to leave a like, comment that you enjoyed it. Let me know what stuff works for you, what stuff doesn't. I want to know what content to create for you. Much love, stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. Out.